Hello, we are Nerds of the West, and we have just played a game of Gugong. Some of us have played before. Chris has his first time playing. We're going to give you our thoughts on this worker placement resource management game. And in the end, we're going to put it on our Nerds of the West ranking list. We rank games here not based on 1 to 10, giving objective scores on mechanics, just if given the opportunity, what we personally would prefer to play. Sean, are you able to give us an overview of what this game is, what you're doing, how it feels to play? Yep. So this, like you said, it's a worker placement game. So the core of the game is that you will be using a hand of cards with a certain value numbers on them, one through to nine, to play out onto certain areas of the board um, where you kind of want to aim for putting out a card that is a higher value than the one that's already out there so you can get the best out of the action because you can still do it if the card value is lower the one that you're putting out than the one that's already out there, but you have to pay a penalty. Now, each of these different areas on the board will give you points in various ways, and you will be managing another sort of resource, which is your servants, uh, by spending those to do better versions of also those actions to accumulate more points. Uh, you play it through a number of rounds. There's four rounds in the game. Um, it's broken up into a morning, day, and night cycle. And then at the end of the game, you calculate end victory points and the person with the most points wins. With one main caveat, that unless you get your envoy to the Palace of Heavenly Purity, all the way up, these are, I think it's seven spaces, you will not score any points. So you can't just do everything you want to score a lot of points. You have to make sure you focus on that one section in the middle. How did this feel to play before we dive into the mechanics before we say if we like it and it's interesting how did it feel to play this game it was rough for me but i feel like in most work placement games there is always a player who is always having a worse time than everyone that helps everyone else do better like i was in place which then helped other people but i was always behind and there was no way for me to get in front yeah it's interesting that you say in most worker placement games that there is that player this falls down as a worker placement because of that factor if it is not even and everyone has the opportunity to do things then yeah. it feels worse for me to play but i don't necessarily think it's this game i think it's a worker placement issue it, every, I, I'm agreeing every, with you. every other worker placement i, has I don't that think same every problem. other worker placement has that problem i think there are some that solve that and are more balanced mm. and that's why this game is probably going to be a little bit more down the list for me. Chris won. On the other on the other end of it, I had a fantastic game. Every single time <laughs> I went to take a turn, I had more than one option. I felt like things that I was doing were comboing and chaining into one another. There was a turn where I basically resolved four things at one time. I explored and then did another action elsewhere and then came back to the explore and a token gave me another one somewhere else. So for me, it felt great. It was pretty much exactly the opposite experience that Paul Lachlan had. So for me, obviously- Which I'm... is probably representative in the scores as well. Mm. Where yeah, for Chris sure. finishing on top and me finishing very much down the bottom. Do you have anything to say before I dive in on Chris's comment? Uh, I think I had a middle of the road experience. Um, the, I've played it twice. The first time I played it, I really struggled with the management of the servants. Like I felt like that wasn't so great. They were hard to get, easy to spend. You could run out before you ran out of your cards, which are actually indicative of how many turns you can actually take in a game. Uh, so I really struggled with that. However, this game, I managed to work out I guess the mechanic of it and how to manage that a lot better. And so I feel like, yeah, if you can get yourself into a position like Chris, where you can really make your turns pay off and you maximize them, mm. you can run away with the win like yeah. Chris did. And, and I think runaway is my issue with this game, <laughs> is if you can get yourself into a good position, the main way to do that is with the decree cards. And the problem with the decree cards is by giving you additional powers, extra ways to score points, and then extra final game scoring is the first person to get there slows everyone else down from doing that as well. It increases the cost to get these, which mm. means if you are able to afford to do this, which Chris was because he got the extra worker, he got the extra resources early, you are slowing everyone else down, prohibiting them from getting those, and therefore you are running away further because you, you have the extra resources, you have the extra ways to score points, and you have the extra combos. There is very little you can do in this game to come back once you are behind. 
which feels that really is... rough if you fall into that position because the cards have been handed out in a certain way to stop you from doing that. Yeah, that's true. Like on the very, very first action, Sean was the first player and he got to go and do his decree first action, first move. He played a card into the decree area. He paid his three workers or the two workers is what it cost. Whereas it cost me three workers. So I was immediately down because I went to the same decree as what Sean did. So it was like immediately straight off the bat, I've already one worker less than what Sean was mm. by trying to do the same decree yeah. as what he was doing. The, the powers are the way to win this game, which means like there is no secondary option to just go, oh, I'll, I'll focus on spending my resources here instead mm. because the person with more resources can hold you out from that. There isn't the basic way to win that will get you a net good score. There is find the best way, combo the best things, which is interesting. I like the mechanics. I like the way of finding the ways to spend the resources. It just leads to people getting left behind I and think, being less fun. Yes, but I also feel like there is still a great amount of things that you can do and it is that resource management where if you are playing the right cards in the right areas um, then you will have the resources you need to circumvent that issue like other games where you're worried about just being trailing behind people and I did get stuck trailing behind people but I think it's also I didn't get myself out of the rut and I think you still can get out of that rut it's just that it's you need to run the numbers and it is very number heavy because you need to go, I need this many workers to do this action. Mm. I also need to play this card on this place yeah. so I can get but that. But if you don't have the opportunity to play that card on that place because of the way the cards have fallen, you then can't. That is that is like one of the drawbacks, yes. Yeah. Because then the Destiny cards as well, which I don't like this mechanic. Yeah. I Love don't like this the mechanic. Destiny because... The Destiny dice are, if you get those numbers into your discard pile, you have additional workers next mm. time. Because I know in the first game, I did not lean into the Destiny dice at all. And I had a great game. But it wasn't until the late game that I started doing Destiny in my like original playthrough. Whereas this one, I was trying, but everyone was trying. Mm. And it really hindered what was on the board. Yeah. Especially when we had like three eights on the board. Yeah. Mm. It's really hard to get rid of, but once depending again, on how many nines there are. Right? Having the additional worker and having the additional card to be able to circumvent that mm. means you are so much further ahead. I, I like the mechanics in this game. I like the, all right, where can I play my cards? Where can I do things? It's just how it all comes together and slowing so many people at the table down. That means mm. instead of other work placement games, I wouldn't pull this out very often. I like the mechanics. I think it's an interesting puzzle. It's just not fun to play for me personally. I still enjoyed it. Even though I had a not as great game, I still enjoyed it. And I still enjoyed the way that it flowed. I think it's not an engine building game like other worker placements can be. But I think also with four players, it was a bit more happening because mm. you have to wait an extra turn before you get to do something. And if someone does get in your way, then it's a lot harder. Whereas if you're playing a three player game, then only two things are happening. So only two spaces are changing as opposed to three places changing. And mm. when things are getting into higher numbers, I think there was just more rotation of things <clears throat> yeah. in a three player game than there was a four. Even though it sounds like there should be more rotation of cards in a four player game, but then that's the drawback of work placement games is when there's more players, there's less space. Yeah. And then there's less space to do the actions with the gift cards. Mm. Any thoughts, Sean? No, I think you guys covered everything that I would want to say. One thing I'll say is that <clears throat> well, despite winning and having a great time, the one yeah. thing I think that really hurt Lachlan, and especially, and me at some points, is that the way that you can wrap the numbers back around again was actually too debilitating. I reckon, let's say for example, it was there's three eights out here, right? And eights got little to do with the destiny. No one has any desire to go to those positions. They basically get locked out and it takes away from your choice as someone who's trailing to actually diversify your strategy, just yeah. like what's being mentioned. So for yeah. example, let's just say that uh, a one could be an eight or a nine and perhaps even a two could be just a nine and a one. Right. Then at least it would give you more opportunity to play into areas and not have to waste your workers yeah. uh, as a penalty yeah. because then you could at least do something even yeah. if it wasn't optimal. I think um, Morgan in chat said it where she said that the higher numbers don't have as many special abilities mm. which I think is true but I don't think it's true enough that I feel like maybe the higher numbers should just be high numbers 
and all the low numbers should give you the options. So then it's like, I want to take that one and I want to take that like yeah. low number for the extra ability as opposed to having an eight that has an extra ability on it um, so mm. that you can do yeah. double actions. So then you've got the sacrifice of doing it. But I think maybe it's just instead of spending two workers or like, I like the gift card idea. Yeah. I like trading up and I like that concept. I just don't know how you could find two. In, in practice, other than it like, really seems to lock out. Uh, unless it was like, instead of you could trade anything for anything, but those numbers impacted somewhere else. Yeah. Right. I, I'm curious to see if there's a strategy that we just haven't seen or haven't found, mm -hmm. um, but I just feel like these powers are so strong. You have to focus on them and it gets you resources yeah. so quickly. I, on that though, the game's gorgeous. The game is very good. The game is like, nice, yeah. The really cards nice. feel nice. There's so many little sections on the cards that are about like, there's these little fans that indicate which player gets to use those cards. Why is that not working? Oh no, take Broken. Oh no, it's just not in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, um, there, there are so many little things on the cards that are really, really useful, but still look nice on the cards. All the meeples and all the little um, uh, mm. tokens feel really nice. Everything on the board is cool. I love the shape of these for some reason. They, they're just <laughs> yeah, really yeah. pretty. The iconography is clear, easy to understand. Um, yeah, that's one yeah. thing a game like this can get lost in is like being too complex and all these symbols and colons and little arrows like describing what something does in using hieroglyphics. Yeah. But this was quite simple and it made it very intuitive. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to understand that when you read it for the first time, but once you read the rules and you read what this does, yeah. You know it. it yeah. It's, yeah. You look at it and you go, oh, that's what that is. Oh, and yeah, you get that space, yeah. you do two actions. You do one of two actions. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You know, and, and you get it. The concept and, is simple. And everything flowed nicely. If you had a card, then when it was played, you did the bonus action, then you did the second action. Yeah. Because I, it flows down. Oh, yeah. I like the way it flows down, that it connects. It's There is so much to like about this game. I don't dislike it. I just have problems with it that I personally wouldn't play it too often again. But that is how we rank things here. We're all going to rank it and then we're going to re-rank our board at the end of the year so everyone who has played the game will get to vote on it. So let's have a look at our Nerds of the West ranking list and decide where we are going to put it today. Um, we have quite a lot of games up the very top. Uh, at the very top for us right now is still Ark Nova. Uh, <laughs> I, Ark Nova is a much more uh, interesting worker placement and um, engine building game to me. It's definitely not going to beat it. For me, this is going to fall quite low, probably down below Libertalia. I think as like an engine building, playing cards of certain numbers game, that game is quicker, simpler, easier to teach, better at a four player count personally, in my opinion. So that's where I'm putting Gugong today. Fair enough. All right. Well, I'm going to jump in. Uh, for me, I like the heaviness of it. Um, I'm always tending to skew more towards heavier games. So it's going to go higher than something like your more lighter games in here. Um, I'm just trying to look for another worker placement. Is it unfathomable, you'd kind of say, would that be? Mm, it's, not sort of, really. it's not really. No, but it, hidden, with, hidden, Wingspan, hidden. Asia, Roll Camera, Roll Camera is a cooperative worker placement. Yeah. Um, the Wolves is is more area of control. Um, yeah. We don't really have another one other than Dune Imperium, but it does not beat Dune Imperium for me. Uh, so I think it's going to sit around down here. Oh, let's just say we put it um, just above Space Base. Yeah, fair enough. From the same year. That's about the area I was thinking as well, because uh, a lot of these games are fantastic games. Like uh, we're pointing to basically the middle of the board, but everything up, up here is you know, like eight, seven and yeah, above. above. Mm. So it's going to be basically parallel with Hidden Leaders for me. I would crack either of those out at board game night. Yeah. yeah. I think that it definitely needs some more playthroughs to see the Matrix and <laughs> like I didn't do as much exploring in this game which probably hindered me and I didn't get on the shipping as early as I probably could have or I could have just negated doing that and try not get my large guy. There is options there. Yes, the decrees. Yes, maybe the Jade needs balancing and the decrees need balancing but I still think it was overall good and I think the next time you'll come at it at a different angle. So I don't think it's totally out of the water. I would probably say it's just below the walls. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Did you rate it the highest out of all I think of you them? did. Yeah, it yeah. did. Interesting. Well, regardless, it's going to end up about this area here. Two middle of the road, one high, one low. I reckon it's a bit higher than A bit that. higher? All right, we'll put it above this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> both of them put it in the middle here. Yeah. So yeah. it grabbed But I put it fairly low. So regardless, 
end of the year, this will get re-ranked. You can join that stream live, twitch.tv slash Nerds of the West, to see where your favorite games or our favorite games end up being. Otherwise, we are live every single weekend. You can come hang out and play some board games. Well, watch us play some board games. Learn some new board games with us. We have been Nerds of the West. We have Chris. Goodbye. We have Sean. <laughs> Hello. Goodbye. Hey, Lachlan. Side chair. My name is Tom, and we will catch you next time. Yeah.